Well, Michigan and Michigan State played each other for the first time way back in 1898. John Matthews remembers that game. Since, the two teams have played 108 times with no ending being quite as painful as the one Saturday. This is what everyone's talking about. This is the skinny. 10 seconds left, Michigan up by two and punting. This is brutal to watch. Whoa, he has trouble with the snap and the ball is free. It's picked up by Michigan State. Jalen wants Jackson and he scores on the last play of the game. There is only one word to describe that play. So many things have to go wrong for the Wolverines. The punter has to mishandle it. Oh then the Spartans have to pick it up. Oh my God! If anyone from Michigan tackles Spartan Jalen Watts Jackson, the game is over. No one does. Oh my God! <laughs> but as this man was crying in the stands, there was a different cry going on down on the field. Those are cries of pain from Jalen Watts Jackson, the Spartans hero with a broken hip at the bottom of the dog pile. Watts Jenkins' dad says his career is not over. So one injury worth the memory of a play of a lifetime in a rivalry that's lasted much longer than that. And that's the skinny. So what do you think? Which one was more painful? I the first one is man card. It's completely gone. Gone. I didn't. I, I didn't even know men could cry everywhere. like. Everywhere. <laughs> but you know what? Other Michigan fans are like, yeah, that's exactly that's how worst. I felt. Jose Bautista has made some enemies in Texas, but it wasn't just his three-run homer in the seventh inning of the ALDS. It was what he did immediately after that has everyone talking and some people angry. That's what everyone's talking about. This is the skinny. Jose Bautista hits the ball a long way pretty regularly. In the seventh inning of the deciding game of the ALDS last night, Joey Bats knew immediately he got a hold of that one. The biggest home run of his life, Bautista deserves to celebrate the way he wants. And that involved this bat flip that will now live in infamy. A number of Rangers have complained that Bautista was showboating, that he needs to set a better example, and that there's no room in the game for one-upsmanship. I'm not sure which game they're all talking about. Bat flips are not new in baseball. Ricky Henderson made it into a work of art. Ever since home runs started being hit, baseball players were finding ways to celebrate them. In Asian leagues, there's never been anything wrong with adding a little flair to your super swat. But I understand, Rangers, why you're angry. It's because your season is over, and this is the man that did it to you. But swallow those sour grapes, because fans of baseball don't care about the long list of unwritten rules. They love this, and they want you to take your loss like a man, not like a baseball player. And that's the skinny. Well, baseball's unwritten code is something that just really bothers me. <laughs> you know, it just bothers me a lot. I can and tell. They just got to get over it. And yeah. Move well, one of the reasons we love football is because it could be much more than just a game. One freshman at Palm Beach Lakes has always wanted to play to honor his father. That dream seemed incredibly unrealistic until one team made it happen. This is what everyone's talking about. This is the skinny. My daddy played football. That's why I really want to play football. But Jaquan never got a chance to play. My mama was about to sign me up for football right before I got hit by the car. That car hit Jaquan when he was eight years old. He spent some time in a coma, then was in a wheelchair for years. This year, Jaquan started going to Palm Beach Lakes High School and immediately wanted to play football. He filled out his um, athletic packet. He had an athletic physical, you know, like technically speaking, he's ready to go. Jaquan started attending practice as a guest and immediately started fitting in. And on Monday, he finally got the chance he always wanted. Let's go, Quan! Let's go, Quan! Let's go, Quan! Come on, Quan! Let's go, Quan! Got into the end zone. And that moment right there, it was just like, you know, you could feel it, like, that was amazing. It was the best moment of my life, cause my daddy in heaven seen me play football. All the people said, you never can play football cause you got hit by the car, but look at me now, I'm finally doing it. God never gave up on me. And that's the skinny. 
my goodness. Jaquan is going to be with the team as much as he can. He's invited onto the field during games and will be invited to the team banquet as well. That is awesome. <laughs> it is the most touching story, story <laughs> ever. I'm sorry. Never underestimate I the warned you, Michelle. Spirit. It's, uh, These are dark times for the University of Central Florida. The Golden Knights are 0-4, and, and their hometown of Orlando is getting a little restless and maybe even a little crazy as one drinking establishment is doing something completely bonkers, giving away free beer. This is what everyone's talking about. This is the skinny. While you'd think fans of the winless UCF Golden Knights would be drinking their sorrows away, it turns out bad football is bad business for local bars, including one Orlando mainstay, The Basement. The owner of The Basement says it was only at one-third capacity for the last game against South Carolina. So now he's doing something completely radical, giving away free beer. The Basement put this photo out on Instagram this week. Free beer until UCF wins. Seriously. Free beer during every game until we win because we need to find something to be excited about. Now the beer they are giving out might be one step away from tap water, but still, beer is beer. And as you'd expect, the interest is high. The Basement is expecting more than double its capacity for the next game, and they're opening up the nightclub upstairs to facilitate overflow. Speaking of overflow, 300 co-eds, as much as they can drink for free for three and a half hours on a Saturday? Sounds like a disaster. I'll meet you there. And that's the skinny. <laughs> You guys coming with? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing no this hesitation weekend? No hesitation at all. Road trip. It was just about an impossible win for the Hurricanes, and they needed a little help to do it. But that doesn't mean they should apologize to anyone. This is what everyone's talking about. This is the skinny. Miami's eight lateral walk-off answered prayer against Duke should go down as one of the most exciting plays in college football history. Except it really shouldn't. The ACC suspended the refereeing crew for four different mistakes they made on that play, including missing a block in the back and not seeing that a player had his knee down. If the play had been called correctly, Duke would have won the game. But no one can take this win away from the Canes, so some national columnists are calling the Canes to forfeit. Well, Miami is not doing that, and they should not. It's the referees' jobs to uphold the rules, and it's not the Canes' fault they didn't do that correctly. But Canes fans, slow your roll. Like the t-shirts that are being sold commemorating the play? Maybe that's not a great idea. Remember in Goodfellas, Jimmy pulls off the heist of the century and he doesn't want his crew buying anything extravagant right away. Well, the Canes stole that game Saturday and got away with it. But buying a shirt that trumpets that victory is like buying a pink Cadillac Coupe de Ville. What are you, stupid? What's the matter with you? I apologize. What's the matter with you? And that's the skinny. Listen, take the win, mm -hmm. but don't flaunt it. Right. Nothing to see here, everyone. Go That's about right. their business. Let's That's move right. on. Let's stay classy. Let's stay, stay classy. Stay classy, Stay Kings. classy, Coral Gables. <laughs> That's right. Well, Dan Campbell promised to change the culture at Dolphins headquarters, and he seemed to do that almost immediately. But there's another football team that strikes an even better chord when it comes to team culture. That's what everyone's talking about. This is the skinny. Dan Campbell's first practice was only 10 minutes old, and a fight had already broken out. One-on-one -on -one competitions, mano y mano, aggressiveness. This has been missing from Dolphins practices and was exactly what Campbell wanted. Hey, all I wanted to see is guys come out and compete and violently compete, and I felt that today. This does seem intense, and while many players said they enjoyed it, it doesn't look like that much fun. Now this looks fun. These are the mighty mites of Milford, Massachusetts. They are scrimmaging at halftime of a varsity high school game. But while about half of them are trying to run plays, the other half can't stop doing the whip and the nay nay. <laughs> Few players are actually running plays around the other players that can't stop dancing. And after the play ends, it seems like they all just can't control themselves. It's not natural for those guys to want to go out and just beat the crap out of each other, but sometimes that's what you got to do a little bit of. And sometimes you just got to dance. And that's the skin. It's a lot safer on their brains than hitting at each other at that age. I agree. Five to seven year olds. It's all about fun. Even more than vision, football is about perseverance, wanting it more than your opponent or more than the guy above you on the depth chart. The want to in Tulane's Aaron Golub is indescribable and needs to be seen to be believed. This is what everyone's talking about. This is the skinny. Watch this play, an extra point. Basically the most boring play in a college football game. Watch it again. It doesn't seem noteworthy. It doesn't seem different than any other random extra point. But you need to look deeper because it's what one player cannot see 
that makes it an incredible play. Tulane had its backup long snapper in the game, Aaron Golub. The Newton, Massachusetts native is legally blind, born with a condition where he can't see anything out of his right eye and has just 10% vision in his left. Saturday, he became the first legally blind player to see action in an NCAA Division I game. And there was no babying about it. The Tulane coach did not tell the UCF coach that it was happening. The play was full speed, and Aaron nailed the snap. I don't consider my vision being an issue. I'm happy to go out there and do anything, and I, I wouldn't have wanted them to know. Let's watch it again. Aaron Golub might not be able to see it himself, but he has given us one of the most remarkable plays that we have seen this year. And that's the skin. He was mobbed by teammates afterwards. You didn't see it in the video, but uh, even they did not know that he was going to be going into the game on that play. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. He remains one of two long snappers that they will have on their roster this year. <laughs> Kevin Harvick is far from a stereotypical NASCAR driver. He's from the West Coast, not the South. He originally went to college for architecture, and there's very little twang in his voice. So if you throw him into the great outdoors, the Everglades, in fact, you could take the Cal California boy a little time to adjust. It's what everyone's talking about. This is the skinny. The last time Kevin Harvick was in South Florida, he was winning the Sprint Cup. Today, he was back to promote the upcoming race at Homestead Miami Speedway, and he was taking his first trip to the Everglades, but not really embracing it at first. He turned down the photo op with a python and did not feel great about one with a gator either. Can you hold that thing if you want? No, that's okay. The big bad race car driver didn't even want to touch this little guy. But once he got behind the wheel, so to speak, everything became a lot more comfortable. It may not be the number four Budweiser Chevy, but Harvick started to get the hang of driving an airboat. It got me a little confused because I could use my feet to turn and my hand to turn. So uh, I'm used to just, I'm, I'm used to using both to turn, but more hands than anything. Even a donut celebration was in order. Yes, it can get wild out here, but it can get even wilder out here. A lesson the reigning champ learned today. You know, to come down here and never have experienced anything like this is, is something uh, a little easier to adapt to the airboat driving than I was to getting in the pen with the gators. Good thing his job is to lift these and not these. And that's the skinny.